What up, big dogs? I apologize if I plug this into way too many videos this week, but it is an announcement that I need to make. We are hiring a full stack web developer. If you don't give a shit about that, fantastic. You can skip to this time. Tony, please link whenever the actual video itself starts. But remember, it's rude to skip introductions. We are hiring a full stack web developer for BDG. E. So if you are a full stack web developer and you are in the fantasy space, if you're familiar with BDGE and the brand, that is where we will be looking to hire first from within. Please contact info at bigdogsfantasy.com. We are looking for someone with real experience, okay? So I'm sorry we're not taking anybody from college. We're not taking anybody that does not actually have experience doing full stack web development work. You will be helping maintain, improve, innovate on our membership website, bdge.store. You will be helping create many new tools such as a dynasty trade calculator. You will be working on e-commerce stuff. You will be working on WordPress and the plugins. You will be working on all the nightmarish things like catch problem, cash problems, however the fuck you say it. And you will be working with us in our office in New York City, which will be coming early 2022. So if you are a full stack web developer and you think you have what it takes and you're good and you have experience and you want to work with us for us, please reach out. Info at bigdogsfantasy.com. Now bike to your regularly scheduled film. What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome. Bike to the channel. Welcome. Bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas, and this is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat. And this is our week 13 waiver wire video. It's about to be halftime of the Monday night football game. Yesterday's underdog pick was Antonio Gibson over 12 and a half receiving yards. We already hit that at halftime. Fucking money in the bank, baby. Underdog fantasy. Use promo code BDGE, and we will bring you home the revenue for the remainder of the year. But we're here to talk about the waiver wire pickups, the fab ads the whatever revenue we're dropping on on players this week we're going to cover right now y'all know what to do before we get into that we're going to tuck our shirts in just stop yelling let's see in an absolutely crucial matchup right now in the E-Town Get Down League. I'm right outside of the playoff picture. I was up like 12. Larry Lunch has Taylor Heineke, and I have the Washington defense. Things are about to get electric. Fucking, what a bunch of bullshit that end of the second half was. The refs want Larry Lunch in the dance. You're not calling any of those calls on the drive that Heineke scored the touchdown on unless you want Lunch in the dance. And then the two-point conversion being brought up. Since when does defenses get penalized for two-point special teams convert... This is my fault. I shouldn't have started Washington D. I forgot. I had... All right, let's talk about the waiver wire. So it's a couple blue chip players for this week. All right, TV's going off. So I... There are a lot of interesting names. A lot of them become less interesting because the guys that we want to pick up like have a buy in the following week. So it gets a little gets a little dicey. We're gonna go look at the chart that we made, which is up on our site right now, bdge.store. The overall number one ranked waiver wire pickup this week. We have the top twenty guys all ranked as well as positionally ranked. Alexander Madison, of course. Dalvin Cook out for. Minimum next two weeks. They're going to have him out for week 13, week 14, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Thursday night game. Their plan is to get him back for week 15. We'll see if that actually happens. Alexander Madison is going to fill in. Alexander Madison is going to be ranked as a high-end RB1, as he should be. This is a tweet from Field Yates. In the two games in place of Dalvin Cook this season, 26 carries, 112 yards, 6 catches, 59 yards through the air. RB7 with 23.1 fantasy points. I don't need to read off the second game. It's very similar to that. RB6 with 26.3 fantasy points. Alexander Madison is the three-down workhorse uh, when Dalvin Cook is out. You blow everything you have left on him if he is sitting there on your waiver wire because he's going to give you high-end RB1 numbers for the remainder of whatever time Dalvin Cook is out with. If we flip the script, we're going to go back to a few running backs after this, but Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill is a guy that I told y'all to break the bank on if you were in a super flex league a couple weeks ago, and now it looks like he's going to grab that starting job because Trevor Simeon can't catch dubs. All right, doesn't eat dubs, doesn't catch dubs. There are no dubs in Trevor Simeon's future. Now Taysom Hill gets on the field. And Taysom Hill is a guy that brings a lot of brings a lot of noise to the fantasy lineups here, all right? Not a good team, though. Not a good supporting cast, which is why I'm a little bit more down. Like, at least he had Michael Thomas last year where he could throw the ball. I still think Taysom Hill is going to have ceiling games where he scores like two goal line carries or two goal line touchdowns. Hopefully that you held on to him. If you picked him up when I told you to a couple weeks ago when Winston originally went down, hopefully you still have him sitting there on your super flex bench. If not, I would still go back to blowing a decent amount of fab if he's there on the wire and you have fab left over. So I would use the number one waiver priority on Madison. 
I would use it on Taysom Hill in a super flex league. I would also probably use it on Chuba Hubbard, who is my second rank running back, third overall player on the waiver wire sheet. Now, Chuba Hubbard, the one thing to understand here, one, C-Max out for the year. He's on the IR. He's not going to come back this year. Yesterday's game, the Panthers got sucked into a black hole and just nothing game script wise can be dependent on going forward. Okay. But see, they have a bye next week and then they play Atlanta and then they're at Buffalo and they have a really tough schedule to finish out the year. Yesterday, Amir Abdullah played a really, really big part in this offense. He saw six targets. Chuba Hubbard saw one. Abdullah played on 47, uh, 49% of the snaps. Hubbard played on 20%. You could look at that and like use that as the raw data you want to pick and choose going forward. The problem is, again, the game script wasn't there. I think this is actually probably going to be similar to what we see out of Washington, where it's Gibson on early downs and goal line. Amir Abdullah is certainly filling into that like J.D. McKissick role. So on two down, two minute drills, four minute drills, passing down situations overall, we're going to see a decent amount of Amir Abdullah going forward. There's no way that they don't use some kind of committee, at least going forward. I still think Chuba is definitely the guy to own in that backfield, regardless of PPR or half PPR or whatever the case may be. Weird game script. Chuba's definitely the early down guy. The other problem too is that Cam Newton takes a lot of goal line work. So whatever value Chuba had, even as the workhorse prior to this with like Darnold under center, not as sexy anymore. All right. So Chuba's a guy that, yes, I'll, I'll probably still throw like 10 bucks, 15 bucks on him if I need a running back at this point, but I'm not going to go crazy because again, they still have their buy. Cam Newton, Amir Abdullah, really tough schedule to end the year. So hard to be super high on him. Next up, we got DeAndre Swift is out with the shoulder injury and supposedly they came out a little while ago and said that it's an uphill battle for him to play this upcoming week play against minnesota at home so jamal williams fills in as a workhorse and i think he just fills in right as like a deandre swift type role where he's gonna get 20 touches probably 20 opportunities five six of them coming through the air he doesn't have the explosive plays that deandre swift does which is what makes swift so valuable as a fantasy player to begin with so jamal williams will probably be like a, a low-end rb2 that you can fill in for one week i expect swift to be back after that they play at denver and then arizona after uh, minnesota this week so if you're really desperate for a running back fill in this week for Jamal Williams, I would, I would drop like eight to 10 bucks on him, maybe in like the eight to $12 range on a guy like him. Then you have another couple of backs, Dontrell Hilliard and Dont Deonta Foreman, both really, really big games over hundred yard from scrimmage against the Patriots problem with them as well Jeremy McNichols missed this game they have a bye coming up too just like Chuba Hubbard and the Carolina Panthers so all these players are going to eat up a lot of bench spots for you through through bye weeks where you need those valuable positions or you need those spots to you know start players so Dontrell Hilliard looked great and Deonta Foreman had 20 touches uh Dontrell Hilliard made the most of his touches went over 115 yards from scrimmage is probably the, the passing down back it seems like Tennessee really really likes this duo and really really likes De uh, Dontrell Hilliard I could see a, a spot where Jeremy McNichols Nichols comes back and doesn't really have a role or they just make him a healthy scratch. I like Dontrell Hilliard, but again, problem is they got the buy. But then they play Jacksonville, so it could be a good uh, good game script for both running backs. They're both guys that I want to own. They're both guys that shouldn't be available on your waiver wire after this run of things, but I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to go over like $10 on either of them because of, you know, the situation at hand. Uh, the wide receivers that are pretty obvious that should be picked up, probably already owned. But if not, you have guys like Darnell Mooney, Brandon Ayuk, and Van Jefferson. Super obvious, probably like 85 to 90% rostered. If not, you go, you go grab those guys. Both all of these guys have been shot up the rankings because of injuries to their team. Darnell Mooney's obviously Allen Robinson in the hamstring. Brandon Ayuk's going to now, you know, get thrust into that wide receiver one role with Debo out for one to two weeks. And then uh, Van Jefferson with Robert Woods out. Him and OBJ have both looked pretty good. And I'd, I'd want to use either of those guys in the flex spot. Behind them, though, at wide receiver, it's, it's pretty fucking ugly week. You have Kendrick Bourne, who, you know, Bourne looked great on Sunday. He's just good at football. To be honest with you, like nine half PPR fantasy points per game he's averaging this year, 10.7 in full PPR. But that obviously comes with a lot of shit games, right? Like it's a buyer beware because he's had like four good games this year. And basically, if you look at the game logs, it's like week three, big game, then three dud games in a row, then week seven or eight, big game, two to three dud games in a row. So it's like every time he has the big game, you get excited about him and then he has a shit game. So that's like, I mean, that's what Kendrick Bourne is at this point. I think we know that he's probably a better real life player than fantasy player. But if you need somebody in a PPR league, like he'll probably put you up 10 points or so. I think there's a lot of players that you can probably fill in to do that as well. Tevin Coleman, you know, seems like he's going to get the volume there for the Jets while Michael Carter is out. I'm not too high on him, though, because they got Philly, New Orleans at Miami. So not like a great, great schedule. And, you know, his carries are basically fucking empty calorie calories. What else we got here? Uh, tight end position. We actually do have a couple interesting pickups. At least we have one really interesting pitch up, pickup, and that's Foster Moreau. So Foster Moreau is going to fill in for Darren Waller, who is supposedly week to week. I don't know if that means he's guaranteed to miss this upcoming week, but it sounds a little bit worse than we had originally heard. He's got this IT band or some sh I don't fucking know what it means, but something with his knees going on, all right? Reminder of Foster Moreau's usage in his lone start this year if Dal Darren Waller knee can't go. 100% of snaps, 32 routes on 37 dropbacks, six targets, 
17.6% target share, six catches, 60 yards, and a touchdown. Foster Moreau, super athletic dude. You can see his player profiler page right now is you know off the fucking charts. He's got mountaintops left and right. He's a guy who's going to fill in for Darren Waller. Really, really nice. And he's playing against his putrid fucking Washington secondary. And then they get KC. So if Darren Waller misses multiple weeks, I think Foster Moreau can be a really, really nice, like, Back end tight end one fill in. He can go right into that spot where you, if you had like Pat Fryermuth, if you had Dan Arnold, this is a guy that I would be targeting ASAP to get into your lineups. So I also like Marquez uh, Valdez Scantling with Randall Cobb now probably out. Marquez Valdez Scantling had 10 targets last week. He had nine targets in this one. They have their fucking bye. So shit, I forgot to look at that right before I started saying that. But regardless, they get Chicago the week after that, who have not been a good defense. So Marquez Valdez Scantling was like, looks like he could be the wide receiver two in this offense that we thought he was going to be in the beginning of the year. After that, we got some later, like later-ish, deeper league pickups. Matt Breda, Russell Gage, LaVisca Chenault, Nick Westbrook-Akini, James O'Shaughnessy, Laquan Treadwell. Those are all guys that if you're interested in knowing more about them, they are available on the site bdge.store in our waiver wire fab guidance chart. Uh, as per defenses, you have Indianapolis Colts would be on my number one pickup this week. They play at Houston. The Philadelphia Eagles play at the New York Jets. You have the Miami Dolphins play at at home against the Giants, and you have the Minnesota Vikings at Detroit. So four defenses that are probably not relatively very highly owned with four really good matchups. So a lot of really good streaming options this week, but Indy at Houston would for sure be my number one suggestion for the week. All right, uh, that's all I got for y'all today. If you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you're not already subscribed, throw the D in the subscribe. You know how it is, what it is, what it be. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video though, and we will be back bike either tomorrow or the day after or some shit maybe with a vlog me uh me animal and mr fake intern tony are going to be looking at some office spaces all day tomorrow so i'm not sure if we're going to be able to get a video out for wednesday but for thursday we will definitely get some, some shite out there for you all right i love y'all enjoy the rest of the evening i will be uh shitting myself until the last whistle of monday night football is blown so this sucks